Uh, there are two types of polymer, the natural polymers and the synthetic polymer. Examples of natural polymers are natural rubbers, protein, okay, and uh, carbohydrates. Okay. So natural polymers occur naturally in living things. Eh? Okay. So these are the natural polymers. Um, in Form 5, we will discuss uh, natural rubber. Okay, natural rubber. And uh, we will only have a very, very brief introduction again on uh, proteins and carbohydrates because you you learn this in uh, biology, biology, protein and carbohydrates that so you learn in biology. And uh, the natural polymers are made up of uh, carbon, hydrogens, nitrogens, and oxygens. Uh, so these are the elements in uh, natural polymers. Uh, anyway, as I told you just now, in this chapter, we will only focus on synthetic polymer. Okay, synthetic polymer. So synthetic polymer is the polymer that is manufactured in industry from chemical substances through the polymerization process. Examples of synthetic polymers are plastic, synthetic fibers, and uh, synthetic rubber. Uh, these are the polymers that we are going to discuss uh, today. There are two types of polymerizations. The first one is called polymerizations by additions, and the second one is called the polymerizations by condensations. Before we discuss these two, okay, first of all, we need to know what does it mean by additions and what does it mean by condensations. Uh, additions reactions uh, occurs, it occurs in this uh, carbon compound, okay? It occurs in carbon compound. Okay, so let's say we have a carbon compound and uh, in this carbon compounds, we have four carbon atoms. If you still remember, when we discussed periodic tables, we have learned that carbons located in group 14, in group 14, uh, carbons contains four valence electrons. Uh. Uh, when it contains four valence electrons, it's not octet and therefore it's not stable. So it will share these four pairs of uh, valence electrons with four other atoms and uh, form four covalent bonds. So it will share electrons. Uh. So carbon will share four pairs of electrons with uh, other atoms to form four covalent bond, eh? four covalent bond, and each line that I draw here is the covalent bond, eh? okay, covalent bond. So each line represents one covalent bond, but sometimes, okay, this is a single bond, eh? and we have learned that sometimes atoms that can share more than one pair of electrons. For example, this carbon and this carbon they share two pairs of electron, and this is called a double bond. Eh? This is called a double bond. Now, if there is double bonds between carbon and carbons, okay? Then we can add something. We can add something inside. Like for example, we add AB. We can add something into this double bond, okay? So after we add this AB into this double bonds, then uh, it will become something like this, okay? A and B is added to the double bond. So the double bond disappear. The double bond is broken and then uh, uh, these two carbon is share another bond, eh? another pair of electron with A and B. So initially there's a double bond, right? So we add A B into the double bond, and then double bond disappear. Then A and B is attached to these two carbon, and this process is called additions reactions. Addition reactions. So that is additions reactions. Eh? Okay. So additions reactions occurs when there is double bonds between two carbons and we add something to the double bonds uh, that process or that reaction is called addition reactions okay so that is additions reactions uh. Uh, this reaction is metals react with metals or non-metal with non-metal okay carbon for sure is non-metal okay and uh, this reaction is in between non-metal and non-metal non-metals and non-metals uh. uh, first of all okay First of all, you need to know what is this? This is a carbon atom. This is another carbon atom. Okay. And then what is this line all about? Okay. What is this line all about? Now each line represent each line eh, represent a covalent bond. 
it's a covalent bond, okay? Covalent bond. Um, covalent bond is the bond, is the chemical bond between non-metals and non-metals, eh? non-metal and non-metal. And each covalent bond actually is uh, is the sharings of one pair of electrons. Eh? Okay, we have learned this in chemical bond. So each covalent bond actually is a sharing of one pair of electrons. Is this bond is C2? Actually, not necessarily it must be C2, okay? It, it can be, we, we can have more carbon, eh? more carbon. Okay, we can have more carbon, not necessarily it must be C2. Uh, this additions, uh, additions reaction is always occurs to the double bonds in the carbon, carbon only, eh? okay? First of all, you need to know what is this line is all about. So this line represents a covalent bond, eh? covalent bond. Now, sometimes, okay, this covalent bond, okay, there is, there is uh, just one bond between two atoms, we call this single bond, okay, one covalent bond between two atoms, uh, this is called a single bond. Now, we can also have two covalent bond between two atoms, like this one, okay, and we call this double bond. Now, we can even have three bond or four bond, eh? three bond or four bond, a triple bond, okay, uh, but now we only discuss double bond. Eh? So, we have single bond and double bond okay now if there is double bond if there is double bond here then you can add something into the double bond you can add something into the double bond you can add something let's say we add uh, hcl or, or chlorine okay we add chlorine into the double bond we can add chlorine to the double bond okay so what will happen if you add chlorine to the double bond let's see uh, what will happen if you add chlorine to the double bond, okay. Now, if you add chlorine to the double bond, let's use another color for chlorine. Let's say uh, chlorine is green in color, so let me use green color. Okay, let's add chlorine into the double bond. So after you add chlorine into the double bond, then uh, it becomes something like this. Okay. Okay, so can you see that? After you add the chlorine into the double bond, this chlorine is attached to these two carbon, okay? And then we eliminate the double bond. Eh? Just now it's double bond, right? After the reaction, there's no more double bond, okay? Okay, so if there is a double bond, you can add something inside. Uh, after you add this something inside, then you eliminate the double bond. These two things attached to the double bond. And this process, these reactions, this process is called additions reactions. Then, if it's a single bond, can we add another atoms? Uh, single bond, you cannot add another atoms, but you can replace it with another atoms. For examples, eh? for examples. So you see, uh, those things here. Okay, actually, there's uh, there's other atom. Uh, like, let's say it's uh, hydrogens. Okay, usually it's hydrogens. Eh? There's hydrogens attached to all this uh, carbon. Okay, so there's a single bond, right? This is a single bond. So you cannot add something into the single bond, eh? okay? You can add something to the single bond, but like for example, you have a hydrogen here, okay? You can replace these hydrogens, replace the hydrogen, take it out, and replace it with this, let's say, a bromine. So you can cannot add something to the single bond, eh? but you can replace the atoms, uh, some of the atoms, eh? okay? And this is called substitution reaction. You cannot add atom into the single bond, eh? but you can replace the other atoms inside. Okay, so addition reaction is a reaction that we add uh, another atoms or molecule into the double bonds between carbon and carbon. That is called addition reactions. Then how about condensations? So far in science, uh, you have learned condensations. Condensation is a process where where uh, a substance in gaseous state, okay, it condenses uh, to become liquid. This is called condensation. Eh? But this condensation, this condensation is a physical process. It's a physical process. Eh? Physical process. But these condensations that we mean here is a chemical process. It's a chemical reaction. Okay, it's a chemical reaction. So this condensation and this condensation is not the same. Eh? This is a physical process and this is a chemical reaction. Eh? So uh, then what, what is this condensation means? Okay, condensation occurs. Uh, let's say we have, we have a molecule, okay? So this molecule, at one side of this molecule, 
it has uh, H, hydrogens, okay? At another side, it has OH, some molecule, it has this structure. For example, for example, some um, uh, alcohol, alcohol, you can has one side has OH, and one side has H. Huh? So this is a propanol, huh? okay? So this propanol, one side it has OH, another side it has H, huh? OH and H. So, so we have this structure, okay? We have OH here and then H here. HO or OH, okay, actually it's the same, okay? Okay, it depends on uh, is at which side, okay? If, if it's at this side, then you will draw OH, right? Yep, but uh, usually we call this OH group, uh, okay? OH group, this is called hydroxyl group. So we do not say uh, HO, uh, okay? So usually we, we, we call it OH. So it's OH, uh, okay, OH. Let's, let's say we have a few, few molecule, okay? We have this molecule, we have a few of it. We have another one here. For this molecule, if there has a, one side has H, another side has OH, okay? Now this H and OH, when they meet with each other, okay? You can think like that, okay? They meet with each other, then they will combine together, okay? They will combine together, they combine together, then they will form water, okay? They form water. So uh, combines together means that they will leave the molecule, okay? They leave the molecule, okay? And then they will form water by themselves. So after they form water, then these two molecules will join together. We join together. So this also happen. it will also have happened here, okay? H and OH, they leave the molecule, okay? They leave the molecule and then they form water. And these two molecules, they join together. And this process is called condensation. Okay, this is a condensation reactions, condensation reactions.